What's up, attackers? We are here with Mike, and we are at the worldwide headquarters of Loot Crate. This is where it all happens. So, Mike, let's take a look at what you guys got going on here. Let's do it. My name is Matthew Aravalo, and I'm the co-founder of Loot Crate. I'm Mikey Petrelia, and I am handling marketing and partnerships. My name is Marissa, and I am the community manager at Loot Crate. What we do is uh, we're a subscription box service, and our tagline is Unbox Epic Every Month. We ship you a box of Epic Geek and Gamer items. Put it around a theme, put it in a box, and ship it to you every month. And high-fiving people. <laughs> so this is kind of like a group workspace. We kind of got these big tables built up. Uh, that's like a chalkboard wall that right now we just have a zombie target set up to shoot with Nerf guns. So this is a cardboard armor from when we did our Console Wars video that we just have. This is also the craft oh. we sent up for January's in launch space. Trade. That's This has been in space. Touch it. Oh. Am I allowed to touch it? You yeah, you can touch it. it. It's fine. Yeah. In space. In space. You can really space. feel the space. Yeah. A lot of it early on was, you know, approaching companies that we really liked and just getting wholesale pricing on stuff. You know, just saying like, hey, this is really interesting and sourcing it ourselves. You know, some of the early items in the very first box, I would like ride my bike down to like some place in the toy district in LA and just say, hey, I need 200 little domos, like keychains, you know. Actually getting boxes in the mail started blowing up in like 2011, 2012. It allows people to just get that experience all the time with a lot more honed in and samples and everything. You can kind of get exactly what you want, not just like, I'm gonna get random jams or a box of frozen steaks from Omaha or something like that. I've seen tons and tons of people describe this as nerd Christmas once a month. Nothing against boxes of jam. No, no, I love jam. Over here, it's a melted Rubik's Cube. This is mine and Marissa's office. Oh, best friends. Besties. <laughs> this is all mine. That's her lowly shelf for now. Uh, that was the original box design. Then we switched to this one, dark one. And then we also experimented with sizes and like prototypes yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Indoor barbecue for no reason because it doesn't actually work indoors. Um, it's a fire hazard too. Yeah, there's that. This is the small warehouse this for is where all the boxes are uh... storage and things. Yeah. You know, we try and touch on not just current things that are coming out like. Ninja Turtles and Godzilla, the 25th anniversary of Game Boy, and you know those kinds of things. But we also try and go back to like some retro things. So things from my what I was you know collecting and when I was had figures. There's some really unique items coming around that pretty soon. I like getting them all hyped up of what's going to be in the crate for that month because I know it's going to be in there. So I can be like, you guys, this is going to be awesome. You should subscribe because you don't want to miss out on this. I've been really wanting us to do a Pokemon crate. Um, I think that would be really fun. Then we can go upstairs. So this will be where we actually, uh, once we start doing more Twitch streaming, we're going to be streaming from up here. Okay. At least once a week, probably. So this is like the hangout spot. Yeah, so they're like chill. We got the TV. We usually bring the other games cases up here when we're not using them for events. We hang out, play games. We got a copy of Rocksmith. You can overlook all the, the Loot Crate land from up here. Wow. It's good to own land. They can do about 10,000 boxes a day, on average. 10,000 boxes a day? Yeah. My favorite part of the job is A, getting to see all the awesome stuff we're going to be putting in the box, all the stuff that's out there that could go in the box, and also interacting with our community. We make sure that people have that experience of being a looter. They feel like they're part of a like special community and a club, and that's that to me is the best part. Honestly, it's probably split between interacting with the community on a regular basis, because People are just so genuinely excited about us all the time. It's kind of awesome. Um, there's a lot of positive energy. That and just being surrounded by nerd toys every day. Nerf guns. <laughs> we have a very large arsenal of Nerf guns. So Because we have made it very apparent that the success of the company has been be also because of the community around it who's come up, being really authentic and, and showing examples of how the community has helped support us, I think just leads to that that kind of continued growth. So you drove this bus to RTX last year. Yeah, we drove this all the way to Austin for RTX. And, and probably gonna do it again. Probably gonna do it again. The bus only goes 60 miles an hour, doesn't have air conditioning. So basically we're just rolling <laughs> in a so, giant sweat box. People probably do, you know, when people pass truck drivers, they yeah. do this, but you're like, we don't have. We got a horn. <laughs> it's not impressive, right, yeah. but uh, all we all painted it ourselves by hand. Oh yeah? Yeah. 
Chris, Chris is also our official bus manager. Okay. Chris, and, the bus manager here. And to make I guess sure bus that, driver too, because you've driven more than anybody else. Have you put the most miles on this bus? Well, besides the uh, the original Owner. school bus lady yeah. driver. Doris, I'm assuming her name is. Yeah, there, I mean, there's a mini fridge that we can like keep drinks in and stuff. Yeah. Beer. Yeah. So for the price that we have of 1337, which is, you know, Leet 1337. 1337 for super nerds is Leet Speak and it's Leet Speak for Leet, which is awesome. Uh, plus plus the $6 shipping and handling. We strive to make sure that people get $40 or more in value in that. 1337 guaranteed to never increase. Well, I don't want to say that. It's not up to me. We see that as continuing to, to scale and, and get higher, especially as it's going to be hard to like really put a value on an item that you can't get anywhere else. So yeah, there are some items that there are things similar to it that go for 20 bucks just on their own retail, but it's gonna be an item that you can't get anywhere else. It's licensed, it's from a game you love, but you have to be a Loot Crate subscriber. So those kind of, those kind of things are things that we're gonna be working on in the future. Uh, what's your favorite story from the back of the bus here? Uh, it's not, it can't be my story because I wasn't here for it, but at VidCon last year, apparently they had a party on the bus I was pretty raging. I'm kind of glad I didn't. I'm kind of glad I wasn't there for it, based on the stories I've heard. But we're quickly, it's quickly turning into like a Guns N' Roses type bus. Okay. It's got some history to it. Yeah. It's places you probably don't want to touch. The Human Torch was denied a bank loan. And there's no rules against that. No rules. If you work here, it's just. You're gonna get shot with a Nerf gun at some point, yeah. Yes, it is very blinding right here, but I'm just ignoring it. But I'm just ignoring it. <laughs>